This entitled dad threatens to kill three innocent employees at a fish shop. Entitled dad threatens to kill three young girls over fish. So I've been working retail for only about six months and I've had a few entitled people, but this guy is by far the worst. For context, I am a 16 year old girl and I have a job at a local pet store. The store is small and has only about eight employees. On this day, I was working the register with another girl who was 18 and my manager, 23, who was in the back. I had just clocked in and had to walk past the fish area where my manager was getting fish for this family, consisting of the entitled dad and entitled mum of the story, plus their two kids, probably around five and six. Before anything even happens, I get red flags from these people. Their cart is filled with fish supplies and a brand new tank. Anyone who knows anything about fish knows you can't buy a tank or accessories and fish on the same day because you need to cycle the tank for a few days first. We always tell customers this if they ask to buy fish. However, as my manager is getting them fish, I assume the little kid threw a fit and the parents just gave in, so I try my best to stay out of their way and just know I'll be returning some fish in a few days. Around the same time, an elderly man comes in wanting to return a harness. I tell him if he wants to exchange it, he can go get a different size and I'll do it in one transaction. He agrees and goes to find a new one. When he comes back a few minutes later, he walks up to my register just as the entitled family and their heap of fish items come around the corner. The elderly man most likely didn't see them and I start his transaction. I wouldn't have even known they were there had the entitled dad and entitled mum not started loudly groaning about people not being able to wait their turn in a line. I check out the old man and he goes to leave. As he's walking out, the entitled parents start loudly complaining again, throwing around curses and insults to see what would stick to the poor man. I start checking the people out as nicely as I can, keeping mostly quiet and avoiding eye contact in the hopes that I can finish the whole process quickly. The entitled parents are throwing stuff onto the counter with such force that I'm surprised nothing broke. The little brats keep handing me small things and saying, scan this now and do this one. I can't really fault the kids, but just from their tone, I can guess how their parents were raising them. Soon the entitled dad gets sick of waiting and sends his family out to the car. I finally finish scanning everything and the total comes out to well over $300. The dad is looking very impatient now and I can tell he's on the brink of storming out. He puts in his card and pays, but when the transaction is done, my system closes it out. Confused, I check the transaction history. Nothing. I call up my manager and explain the situation. The entitled dad is looking very annoyed at this point and I'm starting to worry he might yell. My manager calls up her boss to see what we should do. The entitled dad shows that on his side, his bank transaction says pending. However, on our side, the transaction simply didn't happen. After a long call with my boss, in which the entitled dad keeps looking angrier and angrier, my manager finally hangs up. My manager then says to the dad, so sir, I'm sorry, but it looks like I can't let you leave with the products. This has happened before, but the dad throws up his hands. You know what? Screw this. Just screw it. He pushes the cart away and turns to my manager. Screw this door. Screw all of you. Screw it. The man storms out and my manager is on the brink of tears. She tells us that he'd get the money back and we'd just have to run it again, but I guess he didn't want to wait. The cashier behind me is also close to crying. I'm just quiet and start to grab the cart of stuff to put away. Just then, the man storms back in. At this point, he's now screaming. And if I don't get my freaking money back, I'll freaking kill all of you. He storms out again, leaving my manager now sobbing and me shaking. I turn to my coworker behind me and go to say something. When I catch movement out of the corner of my eye, he's back again. No, I want all your freaking names. I want to know your name and hers, pointing to me, and hers, and I want to know who you were freaking talking to on the phone. My manager is crying and trying her best to help the man. She grabs some paper and starts to scribble stuff down while the entitled dad watches her intently. I want to tell her not to give my name, but I trust her, so I stay quiet. Meanwhile, a nurse from the urgent care clinic next door comes in and comes up to me. She asks if everything is okay, and I just shake my head, no. She stands next to me and the other cashier with her arms crossed, staring at the man, towering over my crying manager. My manager once again calls my boss on the phone and pleads with her to tell her what to do. 
She finally hangs up and tells the man she's sorry about what happened and he can just take the stuff and go. Suddenly, it's like a switch was flipped. He's all, there's no need to cry and you've been so helpful. He actually at one point grabbed her hand and told her it was okay and she didn't need to be upset. Then he grabbed his cart and started to leave. Oh, could I have a receipt in case anything happens? My manager at this point is trying not to completely break down. Sir, the transaction didn't go through. We don't have a receipt. So if they die, I'm just out of luck? I'm sorry, sir. I'm trying my best, but I really can't do anything. Have a nice day. She then runs off to the back, sobbing. The man then mumbles something about thanks for the help and quickly leaves with his free car of supplies. I'm just glaring at this man while I can hear the cashier behind me also crying. After he leaves, the nurse asks if we're all okay. Of course, we're all terrified. She offers to call the police or send in some buff male nurses from next door to stand with us. We decline both and say we can't do much now. Our manager calls in help and leaves not 20 minutes after. The worst part is we have nothing on the man. We don't have his name, number, or even cameras. We all know we should have called the police, but at the time, we were scared he would have done something if we tried. As of yet, we haven't seen the man again, and I doubt we ever will. So, now you've heard my terrifying tale. Hopefully, I'll be starting a new job at Starbucks soon, so I doubt this is the last story I'll have of entitled parents. I don't know how people can work in customer service for years. Major respect to you guys. Thanks for reading. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I think you actually should have rang the police there. I know it's probably very scary and look, it sucks that that was the situation that you found yourself in. Three young women and one horribly enraged man. But at some point, you just got to do it. To be honest, I kind of think that he knew he didn't have $300 and it was all some sort of scam and he was trying to just press you into getting away with it. Turning on the niceness at the end just when you've already got what you wanted for free. It's just downright bullying, isn't it? It's as simple as that. And um, look, it's easy for me to say that you should have done more, but it's probably very scary in that situation. Overall, just very sad that you had to go through that. Entitled mum beats autistic toddler to the swings for lunch. Today was hot by UK standards, and my daughter adores the park. The only perk of the heat, in my opinion, is she gets to play out more. I'll start by saying she's three years old and is autistic. She can't talk or follow instructions, but I love encouraging her to do things outside and she loves swings. School's back, so parks aren't too busy during the day. Perfect. She knew we were going and she ran from the entrance to the swings, but it was surprisingly a bit busy. The swings were occupied, so I explained to her that other kids are on the swings and she needs to wait. She's not very patient at all and doesn't understand most things. She just knows that swings are awesome. There's only two swings, but nobody else is waiting, so we wait. We queue for several minutes and she's getting very frustrated now and begins to cry. But that's okay, the second swing frees up. Hooray, okay, let's go and swing, right? Uh, no. The mum that's pushing her kid on swing one, let's call her entitled mum one, snatches at that swing and glares at my daughter, then at me, before passing it over to someone who arrived much later than me. Let's call her entitled mum two. Now, I know swings are public, but this threw me a bit. Cues are sacred in Britain. Either way, I explained to my little girl that she has to wait again. By now, she's in tears all over. It's sad, but she doesn't understand and ultimately has to learn to be patient. So we wait. The entitled mums then stop swinging to slowly feed their children their lunch while they are sat in the swings. They keep looking at my daughter, gossiping and giggling. I'm not usually paranoid, but the amount they turned around to look at us both made me conscious we were a talking point. I tried to distract my girl in dozens of ways but her autism is very intense and she wouldn't take any interest. She knows she isn't leaving without a swing or two. I don't pretend it's a condition that means she has any right over other children in a public space, I should clarify, hence the waiting and teaching. However, it is very visible and would have been apparent to anyone that she was autistic, not just bratty and spoiled. She twitches, stims, speaks only in hums, clicks and shrieks, and absolutely can't sit still. I love that for her. So I try and have the patience for both of us and help her redirect. Therefore, it hurts to feel like these entitled mums were testing a child who just wanted to play. I've never seen anyone feed a child that slowly, let alone feed two children on swings. Am I missing a hack? By the time their toddlers finish their entire lunches, they don't even swing. Thank God, poor bellies. They just move on. The second entitled mum sneers at me as I tell my girl she can play now. Only to say, 
Oh, were you waiting? Pity. They then laugh and walk off. It was bizarre. Sadly, my daughter was too worked up at that point to enjoy the park, but we had a lovely picnic after I settled her. I know it's not the most entitled or shocking thing that's happened by far, but it was just exhausting to be around people like that and I needed to just let off some steam. Oh man, these two women are just the worst. It's so obvious that they knew. They just knew. Like it's written all over their faces and that snide remark at the end saying, oh, were you waiting? Like you're literally making fun of a mentally disabled child. How much lower in your life can you get from that point? Oh, disgusting. My racist stepmother thinks she's 100% English. I, 25 non-binary, have an entitled and outright abusive stepmother who is 61, who actually believes she's 100% English. I wish I was joking, but she's the classic racist village Karen who drinks too much pink gin, gets her hair dyed constantly to hide the gray hair coming in and absolutely has to know all the gossip and everyone's business. To the point she constantly asked me what's come in the mail for me and invaded my room on the regular. Her voice is the god awful English Northwest country twang. If you know, you know. She's particularly nasty to me having gaslit, manipulated, and at one point instigated a suicide attempt as well as gotten me kicked out for a week all for getting an undercut like I've always wanted. That was for the last bit. The rest is just normal for her. My dad is barely any better, and he's a raging sexist, racist, and has severe anger management issues that culminate in me most often being the victim. He used to scream at nine-year-old me for being bad at maths, thinking it would make me do better. To this day, he still thinks it was a good idea. Spoiler alert, it wasn't because I had undiagnosed ADHD, which surprise surprise is somewhat common from my research at least, correct me if I'm wrong, in families that have autism in their genetics. My younger brother and other connected relatives have this quite severely. To the point though, because my dad is a racist, she also shares her openly racist ideals. For instance, they both hate black people and they constantly use the one word white people should never say. They criticize the government, saying immigrants shouldn't be allowed in the country. They constantly trash on the very restaurants they buy their beloved Indian and Chinese takeout from. Seriously, if you hate them so much, why do you claim you love the food so much? And they absolutely despise anyone that isn't the same race as them. So you can imagine my mistake by implying that somewhere down the line, some of their family probably wasn't English because the UK is made up of a lot of people who sailed over to settle throughout history. The absolute outrage on their face. It was only matched by the indignance. No, because I'm 100% English. There aren't any foreigners in my family. Sure. Sure, I do tell her to STFU whenever possible about this or call her out about any racist BS and because of this, she thinks I have an attitude. News just in guys, being an advocate for BLM, I attended many a protest because it's the right thing to do, and decent treatment of fellow human beings means that I have an attitude. There is a positive to all of this though, and I didn't want to post my experiences until I had one because I'm a firm believer in positivity breeding more of it. I attended a fine art university in the UK for three years and chose to live in the dorms as much as possible. I went no contact as much as I was able, and while some Christmases were absolutely awful being completely alone while I knew my family was feasting, I got to do it as my own identity. I came out to my dad about being non-binary over the phone. He accepted it, but barely. Cut and dyed my hair white as I always wanted. He specifically said I couldn't do that when I wasn't under his roof. Mark that one off as a mini Mish's compliance. I got to attend a pride parade for the first time and gain new friends. I found out that I actually do love pink. I just hate it when it's forced on me in two tight shirts with tacky slogans. And for the grand finale, as of the 17th of June, 2022, I got noticed that I can graduate and my application to move into a flat with my best friend has been approved. I'm 25 and despite having lived for three years away from home, I never felt free until this very moment. I don't have to go home anymore, ever again. No more abuse or walking on eggshells, worrying that even the slightest noise will set my parents off into an argument. I have barely any belongings besides my PC and some clothes. A couple things to help with dorm life and I'm poor as heck. But you know, I'll take that any day over being a punching bag to my parents. I finally move in July 8th. 
Well, hey, that is wonderful news and fair play to you for getting out of that situation. I just can't get over the fact that this woman genuinely said she was 100% English. I don't think anyone in the world anymore is 100% anything. That, that's literally impossible. You're telling me that in the entire history of your family, spanning back generations, thousands of years perhaps, no one has ever lived in a country or been from a country outside of England? There's no way. Like, I'm sorry, but even if everyone in your family that you know of, who was alive or dead, whatever, is born in England, was born in England, you're still not 100% English because what about your massive amount of ancestors? Oh, I don't know. It's a ridiculous argument, but I guess that's just the mind of a racist. Entitled mother refuses to pay damages after her son breaks a toilet seat at school. This story took place around two years ago at my old school. I recently remembered it after I found an article talking about the incidents. For context, at this time, the boys' bathrooms in our school weren't anchored correctly to the wall. So our principal put up signs on them to show they were out of order. This boy, we'll call him Dan, either didn't see the sign or overlooked it and stood up on the toilet seat, causing it to break. This is where our entitled parents, Dan's mum, comes in. Dan sends his homeroom teacher a photo of the toilet seat, to which she forwards the image to Dan's mother, asking what to do. The messages were then leaked and went along the lines of this. The teacher says, Good evening. Dan broke the toilet seat. How is this going to be resolved? Good evening. I'll wait until he gets home and explains what happened. I will await the solution. If the situation calls for it, I will come to school tomorrow to settle this. But we aren't paying for anything. He said he didn't see the out of order sign on the door. The stool should have been locked. I don't consider this to be Dan's fault, rather the school's. Well, I think it's better if Dan owns up to his actions, accident or not. He broke the toilet seat, so either he or his parents pay for it. What if everyone were to break school property and blame it on the school? No, no, he has nothing to own up to, replied the entitled mum. It was the school's responsibility to close the stool. I'm interjecting here to say our school stools had no locking mechanism, so there's no way to do that. I will be coming to school tomorrow to settle this. I do not think children should own up to anything in these circumstances. I am a woman who owns up to her mistakes. I don't think these conditions are safe for my child. I'm interjecting again, but just so it's clear, Dan was 14 when this happened. Dan's mum showed up to school the next day. The details are unclear as I wasn't Dan's friend or classmate, so I heard anecdotal accounts from classmates who knew him. Apparently, his mum still refused to pay the school for the damages. In my country, we have a behaviour grade system, where students get a point deducted for causing major problems or for having too many absences without a given reason. This grade is very important, as you could not be allowed into certain high schools or universities if it's anything below a nine. The text resumed the next day. The same teacher said, Good evening. Seeing as you chose not to pay for the damages caused by Dan, his behavior grade will be lowered as per the school's rules. Good evening, replied the mum. That sounds like a threat and I don't enjoy it. I will come back to school tomorrow to speak to the principal. This is not a threat, but the consequences of the actions taken. If you wish to speak to the principal, you need to schedule an appointment. She did indeed show up again, demanding to speak to the principal and still refusing to pay. Dan did get his behavior grade lowered. Moral of the story, if your kid breaks something, don't blame it on his school. Now guys, before I even say anything on this story, first of all, I wanna see your comments. So don't cheat, don't edit your comments after I say what I'm gonna say. Get in the comments right now, pause the video if you have to, whatever, get in the comments and let me know. Do you overall agree with the story? Do you think this mum, Dan's mum, was entitled? Do you think Dan was in the wrong? Do you think that Dan's mum was in the wrong? And do you think that the teacher and the school and the principal were in the right and that Dan's mum or Dan should pay for the toilet? I want to hear your thoughts first. My thoughts are as follows. First of all, yeah, there was no reason to stand on the toilet. I mean, like you have to take some responsibility for that. There's no reason ever to stand on a toilet, is there? Like, I mean, you are, look, he's 14 years old, but okay, that actively is wrong. He shouldn't have done that, and there should be some consequences. That I can understand. However, I feel like there's more going on here. You know, the school doesn't have working locks on the bathroom stalls. 
a kid can still go and use a toilet that's out of order etc etc like it seems a bit weird no because imagine this if the kid had been hurt during all of this i'm pretty sure that the school would have been liable i don't know what country this takes place in but in my country the uk the school 100 percent would have been liable this i think is 100 percent on the school not maintaining its own you know utilities and not having proper safety standards like it's up to them to make sure the school is safe for their students Therefore, my overall point is that Dan's mum was completely in the right and the score in the wrong. I think she was absolutely fine saying what she said and I wouldn't have paid either. If my kid was involved like that, I wouldn't have paid. It's on the school. What do you reckon? Let me know in the comments down below. Look, before you have a go at me, remember this. The toilet isn't even anchored to the wall properly. And I get it. He shouldn't have stood on it. But still, they are lucky, the school, that the kid wasn't hurt. Just what I'm saying. What do you reckon?